All right, starting over again. This is sciatica relief now, kicking sciatica in the butt, presenting kicking sciatica and piriformis syndrome in the butt. My name is Dean Volk. I have been a physical therapist for nearly 26 years. And um, what we're going to do is just go over some basic information and hopefully give you some answers and some possible relief today. And my, so do any of these sound familiar to you? And I'm sorry, I'm just going to race through these since we just went through them already. It all started slowly with an occasional discomfort when I would do some yard work, housework, do some workouts, go for a walk, play tennis or golf. But over time, it's become more and more intense and consistent. Initially, I noted some stiffness in the mornings, and over time, it would get stiff and sore after sitting for a while, and now the pain and stiffness is constant throughout the day. I notice pain in the morning, but the more I'm up and around, the better it feels. But if I'm up and around all day long by the end of the day, and the next day, it's significantly worse. I felt a twinge in my back, and it slowly progressed to a constant nagging ache. It's only in my leg and foot, occasionally in my butt, but my back feels fine. And lastly, what I hear quite often whoops, is my back went out, I slipped a disc, or I threw my back out when I woke up the day after a workout, I bent over to pick up a pen or something off the floor, I lifted my baby, swung a golf club, grabbed groceries out of my car, stumbled over a curb, or was involved in a car accident, or I was walking a lot on vacation or holiday. Which of these makes your back or leg pain worse? Is it sitting, standing, laying down, twisting, leaning backwards, walking or bending, or is the pain constant and unrelenting? The biggest mistake that most people make initially when they have some back symptoms is they ignore their pain and symptoms or they just figure if I just take some Tylenol or Advil, it'll go away. Those are great in and of themselves, but that's not going to heal the problem. And the older you are, I am finding if people have symptoms seven to nine days without relief, typically symptoms are not going to improve without getting some type of help. So people ask me, why do I take time to do this webinar? And the big reason is I love to help people and I hate hearing about and seeing you and other people struggle. And after looking up information online, I as a PT was confused and I assumed others would be as well. Do I bend forward or do I bend back? Do I stretch it or not? Do I demand an MRI? Do I request or demand to see a surgeon? Will this wrap or strap really work? I have a herniated disc. How come I'm not having surgery? What do I do? And after looking all that stuff up online, I started looking through different Facebook groups and people were telling their stories. They were sharing their struggles, which I think is really awesome so that people know that they're not alone in their struggles. They started giving advice and I realized at this juncture that I could possibly step in and help out because everyone is unique and different and really what works for you may not work for someone else. And even though two people may have the same exact diagnosis, symptoms and treatment can vary hugely. And oftentimes, symptoms may sound identical, but the source and the problem may be very different. So here I am, hopefully to try to clarify things, simplify things, and give some understanding. And lastly, in some of those Facebook groups, I started asking people how much they have spent on their care. And it ranged greatly from $70 to $100 a week to um, $1,000 in the first five to six weeks. Some people spending $3,000 up to $8,000 on different packages at different types of offices. And most of those people were not getting relief when I would dig and ask them more questions. Um, and there were those people who were spending anywhere from thirty dollars to $100,000 from surgeries to their MRIs to every single possible gadget and anything just to try to get relief. And it is so understandable when people are dealing with significant pain and their life is being hindered by pain, they will do anything to try to get relief. And it breaks my heart to hear how much people spend and don't get proper answers or relief to their symptoms. So in order to understand um, what sciatic and piriformis are, let's start with sciatica. In order to stand, understand what sciatica is, we need to understand what the sciatic nerve is. And you can see from the screen L4, 5, S1, S2, and S3 stands for lumbar spine, fourth and fifth levels and the sacrum levels, one, two, and three, the nerve roots that come out of the back from the spinal cord come 
together and form the sciatic nerve, which runs through the middle of the buttocks, down the back of the leg, and on the right-hand side picture, you can see that behind the knee, it breaks up into two nerves going down the outside and the back of the leg. And the sciatic nerve is about as thick as a um, medium-sized thumb. So it's a decent size thickness up at the top here. And basically what sciatica is, is just a generic name for an irritation anywhere along the sciatic nerve. And we'll learn some of the causes of it in a few minutes. But on the right-hand side, you can see the three main places of pain that people with sciatica suffer with, right in the middle of the hamstring, the upper part of the calf, and then down in the bottom of the foot. That does not exclude the butt. It doesn't exclude behind the knee. It doesn't exclude any area, but those are the typical regions where the most intense pain, tingling, or numbness is noted with sciatica. So what is piriformis syndrome? And I oftentimes give these two pictures out to people, and I've seen people do these stretches quite often, and that's basically your piriformis stretch where you're taking one knee, crossing it over to the opposite shoulder, and that face may look familiar or this position may look familiar because people with piriformis syndrome have severe buttock and low back discomfort. So what is the piriformis muscle? And you can see I highlighted piriformis in red here, and it is the triangular muscle that runs from the sacrum to the top of your hip. And here you can see on the left side of the cheek, all the muscles. We peel away the gluteus maximus muscle, and to reveal, you have a gluteus medius muscle, and right in the center of the buttocks, I painted it in black, is the piriformis muscle. And I've been told that um, there's a surgeon out there doing great surgeries for people with piriformis syndrome, just removing that muscle, and people saying that it's sort of just a vestigial, small muscle that really doesn't matter. And I will love to see what the long-term studies show, because this muscle does actually have a big effect on the hip. So I would assume that in the long run, um, 10, 15 years down the line, there's going to be a difference in hip mechanics from the right side versus the left side without that muscle. But the results of his surgery are showing immediate relief, people getting back to their activities quickly and without a lot of side effects. So that is good news if you're looking for quick relief and you specifically have piriformis syndrome. So piriformis syndrome is basically similar to what sciatica is. It's, an, it's sort of a generic name, but it's an irritation of the piriformis muscle that causes pain, whether it's from an injury, a muscle spasm, or tightness. Any problem in the piriformis muscle can be classified as piriformis syndrome. The symptoms are severe pain in the buttocks and hip, but Due to the proximity of a sciatic nerve, the symptoms can mimic sciatica with pain, numbness, tingling, and electrical-like shocks anywhere along the sciatic nerve distribution. And studies of the sciatic nerve show that approximately 80% of the time it runs immediately below the piriformis muscle. In 10 to 15% of the people, it runs right above the muscle. And in 10 to 15% of the people, the sciatic nerve pierces right through the muscle belly of the piriformis. So you can see why. When people say, well, you might have piriformis syndrome, you might have sciatica, it is really hard to distinguish just because of the, pro clo of, excuse me, the close proximity of these, um, the muscles and the nerves, plus everything else that we're going to find out about um, low back issues. The three most common causes of back pain, which, or sciatica and piriformis syndrome, number one, a bulging or a herniated disc, and we're going to go over each of these independently in a moment. Number two is stenosis also known as degenerative disc disease or arthritis. And the third is the SI or the sacroiliac joint dysfunction. So starting with the bulging disc. A bulging or a herniated disc in the spine typically moves backwards towards the spinal nerve. If the bulge touches a nerve root, it can cause pain all along the entire distribution of that nerve. And since nerve roots form the nerves into the leg, whether it's a sciatic nerve or other nerves, um, to the leg. Pressure on those nerve roots can cause pain all the way down the leg and into the foot, as well as some tingling or numbness. And here's a picture on the left-hand side of what a healthy disc looks like. And people don't explain it like this anymore, but I understand it, and it seems to be a whole lot more understandable to most people. But this is a disc, and in essence, it's like a jelly donut. It's got fibers around the outside and a jelly-like substance on the inside. This is the spine that you feel in the back. So what happens when you lean forward, 
the front of the disc compresses and the back of the disc opens up, meaning that this wall along here, these fibers get a little bit thinner, and this nucleus, this jelly substance, pushes backwards. So you can see why over time these fibers get thin and this bulge starts to occur, and you can see how that bulging coming out can hit that nerve root, because here's your spinal cord, and here's the nerve roots coming out the side. And here is a picture from, if this person on the right-hand side was looking to the right, here's the spine in the back. Every time they would bend forward, this would compress, this would open up, which would cause the jelly-like substance to push backwards. So stenosis, DDD, or arthritis. Stenosis simply means narrowing of the spine. And this can be caused by several different degenerative processes. Degenerative disc disease, degenerative joint disease, and other types of wear and tear. Some people are even born with a certain amount of stenosis as the space around the spine narrows, nerves can get pinched. So sort of just the opposite of what happens with um, a bulging disc. When you have normal discs, you can see how nice and widespread these bones are from each other. And here's some severe osteoarthritis and how this compresses. And it doesn't show here very well, but on the next picture you can see Look at all that white around. It shows the space where the nerve root comes out of. And you can see how when L5 disc here is compressed and degenerative, you can see how that nerve can become um, compressed. So what happens is um, the backside of the disc compresses, which means that these nerve spaces get smaller. So the nerve roots as they come out can get pressed. So even though you may have similar symptoms, to what a herniation feels like because the nerve is still getting compressed. It's from a whole different reason and function, and we'll see in a couple slides the difference in your symptoms. And last but not least is SI joint dysfunction, and I read a lot about people getting SI joint um, injections because of inflammation. The SI joints are where your pelvis connects to your spine. They're the low back dimples on either side of your spine. People with SI pain typically have pain that they can touch when they push on their joints, and they typically have buttock tenderness as well. And here's a front picture with everything removed of where your sacrum and your pelvis come together. And the big hip bones are called ilium, so SI joint stands for sacroilium or sacroiliac joints. And on the back, that's exactly where your joints are, right where the dimples are. So to determine what you may have, there's three simple tests. If you have back pain or leg pain, and when you and it decreases when you lean backwards, but increases when you bend forward, you most likely have a problem related to a bulging disc. And that's because as you're bending forward, remember what happens? That jelly substance gets pushed backwards. So if you have a bulging disc or a herniated disc, that bulge or herniation is going to get larger because the fluid and that jelly is going to move farther backwards into that nerve, and it's going to cause more pain when you bend forward. When you bend forward, but when you bend backward, it's going to do just the opposite and draw the, the, um, the jelly substance away from the nerve root. Whereas if pain decreases when you bend forward and increases when you bend backwards, it's most likely due to stenosis, degenerative disc disease, or arthritis, because as you move forward, it opens up those narrow nerve root and spinal openings and freeing up the nerve. And lastly, if your pain is most severe with sitting and neither leaning backwards nor forward aggravate your symptoms, it's most likely, not mosey likely, but most likely the cause is an SI joint. And if you have severe problems in the morning when you get up trying to put your shoes and socks on when you're sitting there trying to lean over, that typically is an SI joint issue. But now for the good news. Actually, it is great news. And recent studies on the following slide show statistics of people who have absolutely no symptoms but most likely have similar or worse MRI findings than most of you and me as well. Recent studies are showing that discs can actually resolve, disc issues can resolve on their own. They're not sure whether the disc is reabsorbing its own leakage whether the body detects the leaked disc as a foreign substance and it attacks it, or it could be that there's decreased water absorption capability from the injured disc, causing it to shrink back in size, but no matter what the reason, 
studies are showing that there's a definite decreased herniation and bulging over time as a result. And here are some eye-opening statistics. These are statistics of people with spinal imaging who have absolutely no problems, no pain, no discomfort, no symptoms. People who are 40 years old and 68% of people with no symptoms that were studied, they showed disc degeneration. Signal loss means that it's lost some of its fluidity and its liquid absorption capability. Look at this, 50% of people 40 years old who have absolutely no problems show that they have a disc bulge and nearly one third, actually one third of people who have absolutely no problems have a disc protrusion. Now hopefully this is encouraging to you because if you have come back from a doctor who says, well, you know what, you got some bulging discs on your MRI, um, that does not necessarily correlate to pain. Can it be the cause of pain? Absolutely but it doesn't necessarily mean that that is the reason. And you can see as people get older, at 50 years old, 60% of people have disc bulges. At 60 years old, 69%. By the time you're 80, if you don't have severe degeneration going on in your back, you're abnormal. But these are people, again, like I said, with no pain. So if 96% of 80-year-olds have some type of disc degeneration without any pain, I can pretty much guarantee you that if you're at 80 years old and you're having an MRI, you're going to have disc degeneration, you're going to have signal loss, you're going to have disc bulging, you're going to have um, disc height loss, and more than likely you're probably going to have a disc protrusion going on as well. Because if 43% of people who have absolutely no pain um, show disc protrusions, I wonder how much higher that is for people who do have pain. And one more slide to show the normal asymptomatic um, people who have problems and pain. So here's in a hip. If you went to a doctor and had hip pain that was not being relieved, and um, out of 45 people who were studied, 69% had labral tears in their hip. Now, if you have hip pain and go to a doctor and you get an MRI and it shows a labral tear, nine times out of 10, they're gonna say, you need to get that labrum repaired. Yet 69% of people who did not have pain from 15 to 66 years old showed a labral tear. Same thing with the shoulder. 72% of people had a labral tear. Slap is a form of a labral tear in the shoulder. 72% of people out of 53 without symptoms from 45 to 60 had a labral tear. That means that if you have shoulder pain, you go to a doctor and they do an MRI, more than likely it's going to show you have a labral tear. But if you have the pain with it, the doctor is going to say we need to repair it. But here it shows that um, most people... 45 to 60 who were studied have a labral tear with no pain. Now let's get to the lumbar spine. Out of th over 3,000 people at 50 years old, 80% of the people showed disc degeneration. This is pretty consistent with what I showed in the slide before. More than one third had a disc protrusion, which is basically the same as a herniation. So at 50 years old, nearly four out of every 10 people have a disc protrusion, but absolutely no pain. So it is possible for you to have herniations and no pain. And then in the neck, it's even more um, significant. Out of 1,200 people who were studied, people in their 20s, 75% of them had disc bulges. And overall, 87% had disc bulges and no symptoms. So when I get somebody in my clinic who says, hey, I had an MRI and I've got a disc bulge in my neck, I say, well, most people do. And most people don't have pain. So just because you have a bulge that does not um, that does not mean you have to have or you're going to be living with pain. And a lot of times it gives people relief. And occasionally it actually offends people because they think that I'm telling them that they're faking it. And that's, I am not in any way, shape, or form accusing anybody ever of faking pain because um, I don't believe many people do. But I do know that if you do have pain and a doctor tells you you've got a herniation in your disc, that you correlate those two. And what I'm trying to do is let people know that's not necessarily the cause. And even if it is the cause, it's possible to live without pain and be in that condition. And lastly, here out of 44 people who were studied between age 20 and 68, 43% of those, 43, I'm sorry, 43 of 44 people had one abnormality in their meniscus. And you know as well as I know, if you have a meniscus injury and you go to the doctor, 
and um, you, I'm sorry, if you have knee pain and you go to the doctor and they do an MRI and it shows a meniscus injury, they're going in to fix it. And studies are showing for backs, for knees, and shoulders that if you go in at an early age, any time between, and actually, doesn't matter what age, any age you go in for a surgery in one of those joints, it, whether it be knee, shoulder, or whether it be a disc surgery, neck surgery, back surgery, um, there's a much higher likelihood of having multiple surgeries in the future than if you don't have surgery to begin with. So how do I treat any issue? I treat it through a total motion release. That is TMR. That's the technique I use. I learned it about 12 years ago and I've had some phenomenal success. And actually a couple people on this phone call have actually, or on this um, webinar have had some free consults with me and have had some um, amazing results from whether it be sciatica, pain with sitting, pain with walking, pain with moving, that um, there can be very quick results. It doesn't mean that they're going to last, but my big focus is, hey, let's get a person moving and out of pain a little bit so that we can actually progress them in exercises that are going to help stabilize so that things do not return. And what Total Motion Release believes and does and what I believe and do is whenever there is pain, stiffness, tightness, soreness, or discomfort in the body, the body is amazing at continuing to function because it naturally compensates for itself. These compensations cause an imbalance in the body, right side versus left, whether it's a tightening or loosening compared to normal. And what I do is I try to focus on clearing those compensations out first before attacking the issue itself. So a lot of times if someone comes in with a shoulder pain when they try to lift their shoulder, I won't even work on that shoulder until I clear out imbalances in their trunk, their legs, and in their other shoulder so that anything that's pulling abnormally or putting abnormal stress through the painful shoulder, that that's minimized so that I can focus on the real problem. And what I find, what I do is I find what's comfortable, what's easy to move and not painful, and I focus on those activities. This has a tendency to relax the body, eases tension, and it actually calms down people's symptoms. I avoid painful motions as it causes the body to guard, tighten, and causes other parts of the body to over or underwork, depending on what the issue is you're working on, which causes further imbalances and abnormal movement patterns and adds stress through the body, which can further underlie, which can further aggravate the underlying issue. So, so many times when people um, are told with sciatica, if you have pain down your left leg, um, pretty much everybody will tell you to try to stretch that left leg out to relieve that sciatica pain. But basically, um, as you've probably been told, I've been used to, I used to tell people too that if you stretch the painful side, you'll get relief. But what I'm finding is that's just not reality. And I can't think of any instance in life where I can take something that's tight, pull on it, make it tighter, and think it's going to loosen up and still maintain its normal function. So typically what I do to loosen something is I stretch the opposite side and I move to the opposite side to try to give relief to the restricted painful side. And now comes the part of the webinar that I love the most because I get to hear what's going on with you at this moment and we get to see if there's anything we can do to help. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And if you're on the call, there are a few people who are on the call that are not on. But if you want to put your video camera on, that's great. If not, I totally understand. But if I can have any volunteers and somebody, oh, Lisa Smith said I can't see in the chat, but that was a while ago. Oh, that was, that was I just got, yeah. That was a while ago. So does anybody want to volunteer right now if they're having any issues to see what we can do to try to help? And, um, I'm going to ask Jessica if you are willing, because I've actually worked with the other three people who are on the screen right now. Jessica, do you have any symptoms going on right now that you would like to see if we can help you with? Um, right. Well, it's every day, but right now, um, I mean, there's pain in my very, like the very lowest of my back, like right above my butt. Okay. And it goes, it's almost like an achiness on in my butt that goes down, but it, it can occur on both sides. That's what has so many people confused because sometimes it switches. Okay. So I don't know if I have piriformis syndrome and also SI joint dysfunction that's causing that. I, I don't know. Okay. Um, so if you were to stand up right now and bend forward, tell me how it feels. 
Oh, I know I don't have any bulging discs. I've already had an MRI. Okay, no problem. <laughs> I'm just wondering, I'm just wondering, I'm trying to find a position that aggravates so that we can use this as no, a test. Sitting makes it the worst. Okay. But, and when I do the piriformis stretch um, on the bad side, it hurts. Like not, I don't have immediate pain with anything. Okay. I have delayed pain. I pay for it later within okay. either 15 to a half hour to an hour later. And it, then the rest of the day is pretty painful. Okay, so go ahead and bend forward and then lean back and tell me if either one of those increases, decreases, or changes your pain right now. Bending back. Leaning back bothers it? Bit, okay. Because I'm tense because I'm overcompensating. I've already been told like all my muscles are just like a knot back there. Okay, perfect. Go ahead and have a seat. Or is it, it's more painful to sit, correct you said? Yeah, but I'm sitting in my bed right now, so it's okay. <laughs> okay, so sitting right there, what I want you to do, I want you to twist to your right side as far as you can, and then twist to your left side as far as you can, and tell me, does one direction feel looser, more comfortable, less restricted than the other? Um, twisting to the left is easier, I think. Okay. Just maybe a smidge, they're both okay. Okay, um, which leg right now is hurting you, your right leg or your left leg? Uh, it hasn't moved down into my leg yet. It's still early. Throughout okay. The day it gets, it gets worse. Okay. So right now, is it more in one cheek than the other? Yeah, my left. All right. If you were to cross that left foot over the right ankle or right, left, it's in your left. Left ankle over your right <laughs> knee. Sorry. And pull that left knee towards your right shoulder. Tell me how that feels. I mean, I can feel the stretch. It does, I mean, it honestly, it almost feels good because stretching does, but it doesn't hurt, but it will later. Okay. Now try the right side and tell me, does it feel looser, tighter, different, any change right side versus left side? Mm -mm. No. Okay. They're about the same. So sit on the very edge of your bed for me. And what I want you to do is put your heel, left heel on the floor with your right knee, left, okay, sorry, left heel on the floor with your left knee straight. Okay. And now do a straight leg raise. So just take that leg and lift it up as high as you possibly can. Okay. Now, how does that feel? Okay. Not too much of a problem. All right. Now let's have you take your right leg and do the same thing. Is one easier? Same. So you're, you're not having really a whole lot of imbalance anywhere right now. Not yet. Okay. It's when does it, pain. when does it typically get aggravated? I, um, I work at a desk all day and sitting makes it worse. And the longer I sit, the worse it gets. All right. And Tina's shaking your head going, mm, I know how you feel. Tina can Ooh. hardly ever sit. <laughs> um, I think we lost Lisa. She's sleeping, but that's okay. She's in. No, Australia. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. If you are, it's, it's Australia. What? It's like one in the morning there. I appreciate you being no, on. It's only quarter past 12. The night is young. Oh, okay. Gotcha. All right, Jessica, I want you to try something. You said it was a little easier twisting to your left, so let's have you rotate to your left 25 times for me. And Jill, how are you doing? You just popped up on the screen. I, I um, thought this was signing at 9 o'clock and not um, half eight my time, so, I, so I'm kind of uh, late to the party. <laughs> no problem. I actually started a little late, and I'm going to have to end at about in about tw about 20 minutes because I got a patient at 11 o'clock that I got to go see. Tina, is your back feeling any better? A little, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have you been doing the arm lifts? No, <laughs> sorry. <Okay. laughs> I've been pretty frustrated with the pain, so I need to start doing that again. Okay, Jessica, you got 25 done. All right, and just like I've told everybody else on here, I need 25 more to the left, same side. Okay. Jill, where do you live again? You're I'm Texas. Texas, that's right. It's that accent that always messes me up because you definitely don't sound like you're from Texas, but that's okay. No, originally England. Yes, no, that's why I always ask us. I go, I know it's not England anymore, but I couldn't remember where. <coughs> All right, and then there's one shy person who's not on board here. Who's not on screen? Joni, if you have a camera, you can join us on screen if you like, but no pressure.
All right, Jessica, you got 25 done? <clears throat> yes, sir. Now, just out of curiosity, let's have you stand up. And lean back a little bit and tell me how that feels compared to what it did before. A little bit less tight. You actually went a little bit farther, too, unless I'm just looking at a different angle. Yeah, yeah it's a little bit less tight. Okay, so basically all I did, and one thing that you can start doing for yourself is when it starts getting painful, do the trunk rotations, whichever side is more comfortable, do two sets of 25 to that side, mm -hmm. and that should loosen up and ease some of that tension. How's your low back feeling and your buttocks feeling, or the low back and upper butt feeling right now? They're a little bit better. Okay. So those are some of the things with TMR, what I do is um, I find what's loose, more comfortable, less restricted, and um, Lisa, Jill, Tina, and Peggy have all experienced it already that um, when you do those exercises and there's I mean this is just a starting point this is not an end-all um, Peggy's one of the few far between that can ever do two or three exercises and boom it's done um, that's that's the exception not the rule but what the rule is is 80% um, of the time people will feel better by a minimum of 50% by doing a couple of these things and what that allows them to do is start to exercise more normally, start to function more normally, and as the muscle spasms and the imbalances in the body are less detected and there's more balance and things are functioning more, um, more normally, that allows healing to occur and it allows um, the body strength, stability, and um, flexibility to improve. So that's the whole theory behind it. Um, and let me get back to sharing my screen you guys can all um make yourself invisible again actually i don't know why but you were it cleared you right out of there so um for those who are attending what i do is if you have not already taken advantage of the 30 minute free consultation i do love them so i can hear your story try to help you sort things out give some advice as well as an exercise or two that will help there's no strings attached. There's no obligation for anything further. It's just a way for me to say thanks for showing up um, and taking time to participate in my webinar. And if you want that, um, you can email me at info at sciaticarreliefnow.net. And if you don't have time to write that down before, you can see it on the bottom of the screen there, info at sciaticarreliefnow.net. And then the subject line, just put free video consult, and I will get in touch with you soon thereafter to try to set it up. Um, there are no quick fixes, but here's what a couple others have said after the free video call. Um, Sharon from Michigan said, thanks so very much. After the video call, I can now get up and down without that nagging pain and I'll keep up those exercises. And a nurse from Tennessee, Ashley said, so I've had issues since December and this was in May when she wrote this and I've tried every exercise typically ordered for sciatica. I just spoke with Dean Bolk, a physical therapist, and he gave me three super simple exercises to do. And after just one round of them. I immediately felt like everything had loosened up. I'm not sure of another way to say it. And walking up and down my stairs was much easier. Also, the pins and needles sensation decreased in my right leg, and it definitely gave me some hope of functioning normally as long as I stick to it. And then Peggy, who's on the call, wrote, I had the privilege of talking to Dean today via his webinar, and if anyone has any sciatic issues, I strongly suggest you speak with this man. He took time with me, explained things so thoroughly, plus the exercises he had me do. My pain level went from a 9 to a 1. I can't thank him enough, so please get in touch with him. No doctors, tests, chiropractors, or exercises helped me like Dean did today through the webinar. Um, and if you're looking for more, I do have a free a Facebook group called Sciatica and Piriformis Syndrome Group. Um, or you can visit sciaticareliefnow.net. That'll explain more of what I do and what I'm planning on doing in the future. And like I said, you can see it at the bottom of the screen, but you can email me anytime at info at sciaticarelief.net and I will try to get whatever information you're looking for to you. Um, what I am gonna be starting soon is a closed Facebook group and what I'm hoping for is that I'm gonna maximize it at 30 people just so that there can be a little bit more one-on-one um, -on -one time. I'm going to do live um, Facebook. I'm going to do Facebook lives weekly with question and answers for 45 minutes to an hour. And obviously, um, right now we have about 195 people, I think, on the um, sciatic and piriformis group. And it is getting tough to keep in touch with everybody and answer everybody's questions. I'm trying, but.
but right now it's just me and it's kind of tough to be able to get to everybody. So I'm looking to possibly um, spend a little bit more time with fewer people, um, but it would be a paid Facebook group. And what I'm thinking is $40 a month. And if you pay um, for 10 months up front, you'd get the last two months free. So it'd be a year commitment. I'm also looking to do group video classes of 10 people max so I can keep it very manageable and it will be five weeks of one hour classes each week. We would go over the TMR principles, functional activities, everyday task instruction, as well as doing some live treatments. And then I'm going to try to put together some package deals of doing both the Facebook group and um, some video consults or video consults and group classes. I'm still working on those. Um, this is only about, I'm only about a month and a half into all this, so it's really new to me. But what I did want to offer and just have some questions, if you're serious about getting the help you need and deserve, if you're ready to start living with less pain and you'd like your life, what would your life be like if 50% of your symptoms were alleviated? Or if you heard anything today that seems to make sense, that's a little different from what you've been told, and you do want to find out, um, this, if you want to get the same relief that thousands of my clients have over the years, I have a special offer that I want you to take advantage of today, if you can. Um, and here's today's offer. Um, I'm putting together, typically my video consults are $70 a visit for now and they are starting to fill up and I'm thinking I may have to raise the price because I'm just looking at what I'm doing and the efforts I'm putting in, um, not to try to squeeze people, but um, typically five, a five pack would be $350, but today I want to make a five pack available for $300 or $299. If you go to SRN, and it's real simple, SRN, um, Sciatica Relief Now, Video Consult 5.paperform.co, not com, dot co. If you go to there, there's a form there, and if you fill that out and pay, we can um, start that as soon as actually Monday. I have some openings. Um, I'm only going to have three of these available at this price for now. Um, so if you want it, please fill out that form. I'll get notified by email. I'll get in touch with you hopefully later today, and we could set something up starting this week. Um, and again, you can always email me at info at sciaticarelief.now if you didn't have a chance to write srnvideoconsult5.paperform.co down. You can always ask for it when you email me. But I did want to say a big thank you. I greatly appreciate you taking your time to listen and watch today. And I please, please, please take advantage of definitely the free consult. And that five pack of videos um, does not include the free consult. The free consult is in addition. So I would, I always want to do a free consult with somebody before I have them pay anything because I want to make sure that they're a good fit. I want to make sure that I'm right for them. They're right for me and that they understand where I'm going and what I'm doing because I would hate to charge somebody, not get any results and have you hate me. So that's not what I'm about. Um, and once again, please email me at info at sciaticarelief.net. Um, so I'm going to stop the recording.